First of all, I want to say thank you so much for all of you subscribers out there who have watched my videos. Right now, with nearly 5,000 subscribers until the recent YouTube purge, I'm going to make a subscriber special video in the future by the time I actually do reach 5,000. You'll get something special from me. Don't you worry about it. The ad revenue from me just came in, and honestly... It made my life a hell of a lot better, and in return, my videos became better. Now you can hear my voice better, and now I can communicate and shit post on Twitter so much better. Seriously, guys, thank you so much for all this. You guys absolutely freaking rock. Anyway, let's get into the topic. The topic that I want to talk about right now is concerning agenda pushing. The reason why I want to talk about this is because agenda pushing can lead entertainment media into nothing but propaganda. For example, a BBC video reporting about a Stanford University manager who asks for a possibility of having a PSA about women suffering through harassment or minorities suffering through violence. Now, I don't want to include that video as a rebuttal because BBC has filed a copyright strike towards a particular channel that I like, so I'm going to give you the quote right here and the link so that you can just type in and watch the video yourself. Anyway, let's talk about agenda pushing. I assure you, this video will not be fun. First of all, we need to recognize what kind of agenda that they're trying to push in this particular instance. According to this particular sentence, there are two agendas that this person wants to push in the video gaming industry through 30-minute PSA interruptions. Yeah, every 30 minutes, you gotta get interrupted with a PSA. First is experiencing harassment as a woman and experiencing harassment as a minority. This leads to another question. Why would you push these agendas? Why do you have to make women and minorities as priorities over other people? What makes them different? What makes their experiences different from other people? Why are their identifiers matter? You're living in the USA, where women have the same rights as men. In fact, there are some arguments that men have less rights than women. America is also a really diverse country. It's also a secular country, where you can have the freedom to have any source of religion. And by minorities, do you mean black people? Well, maybe black people shouldn't commit more crime. It's insane of how the 30% of the population commit 22% of the total crime. Now, for whatever reason you might want to push this agenda, let's ask another important question. Why push this in video games? The reason why you want to put this in video games, according to you, is because video games is a very persuasive entertainment medium and that it's able to give a huge influence towards the youth of this generation. All right, let's put that statement out as our premise for this particular moment. I want you to do something for me. Give me one concrete example of how games can be persuasive towards a particular topic. I can tell you examples of where it can't be. Does the rampant violence in video games cause violence in real life? Of course not. There have been studies that disprove this claim, and it actually finds out the exact opposite. And then there's the belief that over-sexualized games increase rape, which is also false, and this can be proven by taking a look at Japanese games. Now, just in case you guys don't know, Japanese media mostly came from mangas and they're later adapted into animes and video games. Before we move even further, let's give a distinction because this is important. Drawn fictional characters are not the same as real children, okay? Good. You might be surprised to hear this. But about 30 to 40% mangas contain sexual violence towards fictional children much of it representing schoolgirls of elementary or junior high school age, in themes including rape, sadomasochism, and bondage. Nah, I'm not kidding. Estimated around 35% of Japanese media contains sexual references to children. It's a thing that is rampant in Japan. Now, you may be thinking that this will cause a rampant number of rapes or pedophiles. Nope. Japan's rape statistics per capita is lower than USA. It's not even in the top five countries with the biggest sexual abuse to children. So no, if lolis, I repeat, lolis do not cause pedophilia, over-sexualized women will not cause rape. Video games, or perhaps the entertainment media as a whole, cannot persuade the majority of people based on the content that they're trying to bring. The reason is very simple. They are fictional. There could be some people who are incredibly moronic to actually go off and shoot people in real life based on the video games that they play, but you're not considering mental health issues or parenting issues as possible factors. You decided to scapegoat this and blame it to video games, and even bigger BS like toxic masculinity. It's the shift blaming that I'm concerned with. Nobody wants to take responsibility because apparently that's what you think a lot of successful people do. I 
Gotta blame somebody, otherwise it's all my fault. Fuck that. So let's ask another important question. What do you expect the end result will be? Out of using this method, or PSA, to tell the gamers about the horrors of sexual harassment to women or violence towards minorities, what do you expect to come out of this? Will gamers actually have more tolerance towards women? But that would require the preconceived notion that gamers are intolerant towards women when they are not. There are so many female gamers around the world. It consists of 28.57% of the entire gaming community. More than a quarter of them. This is the data that I got from a Pew Research study. This PSA is supposed to increase their tolerance, but you don't need to do that. They are already tolerant. Same applies to minorities as well. There are people playing video games in many different parts of the world. It's not just limited into the US at all, and they're extremely tolerant. You don't need any more messages about tolerance because we're already tolerant about this. Let's get back to the disparity between men and women in gaming. There are some people who might be thinking that only 25% of women play video games, therefore sexism, and that it is problematic. What they wanted is a bit of an equality, or a 50-50 representation. First of all, why? Why should it be 50-50? If the reality doesn't conform into the situation, why should you force them to be 50-50? The next thing is that this disparity only says the fact that only around a quarter of women are interested in video games. It doesn't say that men are oppressing the other 25% women to just get out of gaming just so that they're dominant. It's not sexism. It's this hobby. And women in general don't like to play video games. They want to do other hobbies. And that's fine. And putting all of those questions aside, why does equality matter? We're talking about equality of outcome and not opportunity. You want 50-50 women and men in the gaming realms. Why? Why do you have to force women into gaming so much? Remember the whole USC thing where they cancel the gaming panel solely because there's no woman in the panel? It's nonsense. It's not about representation of the world. It's about the world of gaming. I made an entire video about it. Yes, the entire world is 50-50 men and women, but they are different. And they all have different interests. It just happens that most people who are into game development are men. It's not sexism. Women can be in the game development too. They just need to work hard. And that's ultimately what ideal ox hate. Working hard. They don't want to work hard. What they want is for people to accept them solely based on their gender or race. Completely arbitrary identifiers putting themselves under the mask of diversity or equality. It's what people call affirmative action. The reason why they apply things like political correctness or cultural Marxism is that they don't want their ideas to be challenged. They don't want to be put in a point where they are inferior. It's the oppressor-oppressed mentality that comes from cultural Marxism that totally destroys the minds of the young generation. You know where else you can preach this agenda better? Universities. They produce some incredibly unintelligent and mentally damaged people with your agenda with degrees that are next to useless. Now, let's shift the agenda from from women and minorities into something closer and more pushing. Politics. Let's just say that you are a Hillary Clinton supporter and you wanted to crush Donald Trump. How are you going to do that? How are you going to make the narrative that Hillary Clinton is awesome and Donald Trump is not? Well, according to the writer of the Sam Wilson Captain America run, Nick Spencer, the one way for you to do that is to write a comic book about a black Captain America who supports Black Lives Matter and paints Donald Trump or anyone who is against mass immigration as Nazis. Now, I still don't get why Nick Spencer have to go with this run. That is, until you find out that he's a former politician who is a progressive and is anti-Republican. So he has an agenda of his own that he wants to push in a particular comic book. It's a shame that Marvel lets people who wants to push politics into their own comic book these days. Just hire people who want to make good comic books, for God's sake. Before we get into the utter stupidity of pushing these politics into comic books, can we just take for a moment and ask why? Why do you have to push politics into our comic books or entertainment media? Why do you have to preach your own ideology or your beliefs towards us? Do you seriously think that it would make us comic book fans to care about them? And more importantly, why do you have to make it so incredibly inaccurate? The Black Lives Matter movement are some of the most radical and violent movement out there that for some reason you portray as saint or rebellious and righteous movement. Donald Trump, he's not the most intelligent man in the universe, but he's no Hitler, for God's sake. Now, let's for the sake of argument accept the fact that all of this anti-Trump, pro-Hillary, pro-immigration, and pro-Black Lives Matter agenda that he's trying to push somewhat have a basis in reality, and that this is all true, and it's not propaganda. 
What does that add into the story? What kind of contribution does that bring into the grand scheme of things? This is where we have to ask the basic question of what can be considered entertainment. Entertainment is something that can provide amusement or enjoyment. People can enjoy things in many different ways. Comic book fans love their superheroes kicking the living shit out of the villains. Anime fans love their animes. Horror movie fans love to get scared. Now, how can we find enjoyment out of people lecturing us that, hey, sexual harassment is bad? Or people going on to say, hey, violence towards minority is bad. I think we could just make that one out with our own common sense. And then you're going to make an essentially propaganda comic leading to a particular area in the political compass telling people that Trump is bad! Trump is bad! Mass immigration is good! Now, Razor Fist brings up a good point in his vlog, which you should check out as well. While it is true that Captain America starts off as a political propaganda comic about the respective superhero punching Adolf Hitler or Tojo, the reason why people love those books is because they're incredibly entertaining. They're ridiculous. They're tongue-in-cheek. And they're self Aware. They also have a significant purpose during World War II. Their purpose is to lift the spirits off of the American soldiers and the American people in general so that they can unite together in unison to fight Nazism. It's to get rid of fear. It's what we call escapism. This comic is not only not fun, but it's propaganda, which consists of portraying a Republican candidate plus people who are against mass immigration policies in general as the big bad villain. The reason? Because you disagree with his politics. Now, let me make this clear. Nobody is telling you to not make comic books. You can make comic books with any topics all you want. I'm just asking you to do one simple thing. Make it good. That's all I'm asking for. I'm just asking for you to make them good. You don't have to cater into a specific audience that I asked. You don't have to make it pro-Hillary or pro-Trump. You just have to make it awesome. If it's good, people are going to read it. But it's evident that not only you make it depressingly boring, but you also have to ham-fist your political message and shove it down up of people's throats. On what purpose exactly? To spread your ideology. That's it. That's exactly what you wanted. You don't want to entertain people. You don't want to bring any sorts of contribution into the entertainment culture. You decided to desecrate on the medium you use in order to push a really bad story that consists of nothing but a political message. I don't care about your political message. I care about you making good comics. And it seems obvious that you just made a very subpar comic that has no substance in it. I want you guys to take a look at this particular comic page that I forgot where it came from, but it spewed the biggest BS that I have ever heard in my entire life. The fact that these comic book writers think that in order to become a superhero, you need a Y chromosome. In order to become a superhero, you need to be a male. What kind of preconceived BS was that? Oh, and let's conclude this with the most adorable human being in the entire world, Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. Oh, he just looks so adorable. Now imagine my surprise when he becomes the main character of Civil War II. You are such a chlor bag. In conclusion, these ideologues and propagandists don't want to make a good story or make good art. They want to exploit art so that it can be used to convince people of ideologies and opinions that do not conform into the standards of reality. Even if it does, it's no longer entertainment. It's no longer fun. Ideologues are the best killjoys in the entirety of mankind. And they're going to remove all the fun that you can see in your life. The best way to tell these ideologues to go screw themselves is to not buy any of their comics. They're not fun, they're not entertaining, they're depressing, cringeworthy, stay the hell away from them, and don't believe everything that they say. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.